virtual stage and virtual reality. Again, thank you so much to my uh, good friend Michael for being here and our partners at Look Inside who are also on the call allow us the ability to service you flawlessly. Um, same experience, uh, sort of same everything from Niagara Falls to Barrie out to Durham, uh, right into Oshawa. So we, we truly service all of Southern Ontario um, and you're gonna get a seamless experience. So that being said, uh, let's go. So what is staging? We all know, why do we stage? Design, visualize, share. And yes, virtual staging is less expensive compared to home staging and it allows real estate agents to make their listings more attractive to buyers. So why you're going to stage is going to depend on a, a lot of different factors. So again, today, just gonna to talk a little bit about the difference between virtual staging and regular staging, the benefits of staging in general, um, and then sort of how easy it is to, to stage um, and, and some process. So um, ultimately, a lot of people are staging homes for two reasons. Number one, it potentially could be a vacant or new construction uh, wherein you know it's just bare walls and floors. Um, and secondly, um, maybe the home you're in needs a little work, could present better. So again, we look at it as a marketing tool um, and a little bit more of a selling tool than say a video is because with the whole concept of staging is, is this is what your house could look like. Now, there's huge benefits, just to kind of preface at the very beginning. When you're doing virtual staging, yes, it's cost effective, yes, it's quick, um, but I want to say I'm not a professional designer. You're probably not a professional designer. So let's not lose sight of um, what the stager actually brings to you. There's a reason you pay that. So I'm going to use the same context um, as you agents understand it when we're talking about commission. So it's the same premise, right? So make sure we, you know, we appreciate the professional for the service that they provide. Now, that being said, it might not work for everyone, or it may be, more value to your client when you can spend a few hundred instead of a few thousand and just sort of, you know, big up the listing a little bit. So again, some food for thought. Um, why virtually stage? Why stage in general? Again, convenience, value, and ease. Um, virtually staging, it's quick, it's easy, it's affordable. You don't have to wait for movers. We don't have to worry if the listing rotates into the next month. Um, and ultimately, again, the stats loaded, um, virtual staging can reduce the cost of staging by up to 97%. Um, you can stage a room or you can stage a whole house and what are you staging in the room? So if you were gonna spend uh, $5,000 staging a home and you spend $100 staging one room, yeah, sure, you're gonna save 97%. The reality is it's definitely more cost effective, um, again, uh, let's look at things like convenience, value, and ease. You're, you're, you're not comparing apples to apples. I want to, again, preface that. Same thing as um, using purple bricks or Mincom isn't the same thing as paying a professional, you know, agent from Remax or the page, Home Life or wherever. Um, but as a, from a marketing sales point of view, I mean, if you have a, a, a home or a basement that's finished that looks like, you know, we'll get photos in, it's like, mm, you know, we want to turn them off. So there's huge value in staging. We, we know that last few years, big time, um, you know, but again, um, the biggest convenience from virtual staging, I think it's about the time. It's not about the money. Um, again, you get what you pay for. Your listing is going to determine if you have a $3 million, two, $3 million estate home and you need to spend a couple thousand bucks to professionally design and stage a few rooms, um, probably still going to be in your best interest as opposed to trying to spend a few hundred dollars and virtually staging a few photos. But when the townhouse is ready that you just built or your client has it in the, as an investment property and the drywall's up and COVID happens and we need to sell it, now all of a sudden, you know, we can get to market a little bit faster. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that at the end here. Okay, so benefits of staging in general. And these are real examples you're seeing in the slides of some properties that we've, we've virtually staged. Um, which again, you know, we'll show you some more live examples. I'll do some screen sharing, but um, attracting more buyers. At the end of the day, we're all in business to close deals. The more eyeballs we bring to the listing, the more eyeballs we bring to the property, the better your odds of closing, the better your odds of getting true value for the property. Um, attracting more buyers. 72% of buyers and their agents state that staging a home makes it easier for a buyer to visualize a property and imagine themselves living in the space. So again, this is what my home could look like. And now more so than ever uh, in the world of COVID and contactless, um, you know, it's, it's very 
it's very important um, to give as much of a real experience, if you will, um, as we can to the buyers. Um, you know, and from a selling point of view, like what great value you're going to give to your seller, especially. Um, I can't stress enough new builds and bank and properties, rentals, that kind of stuff. That's where um, I think the true value of, of staging in general is um, versus just a resale, a regular resale. Um, you have awesome options, virtually staging. Um, you have a, you'll, you'll, you'll have all these different contemporary, urban, commercial, the Hamptons, the, you know, and it doesn't matter what platform. We'll talk about platforms also a little bit to, towards the end here. Um, there's only a few more slides, so you won't have to wait too long. Um, but you're not going to be limited. You're not going to be limited to just sort of what's trending today. If, if you're, um, we did a great, we did a listing for James in the city last year, this really funky house, I think it was in Cabbage Town. It was old, Victorian, um, the, 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 the house build and the finishings were, were very much. So you're not going to take an urban contemporary bedroom and throw it into like, you know, this traditional farmhouse in the city. So um, again, we're not designers, but like anything, technology's main things, pretty easy, pretty convenient, um, streamlined things. So, you know, obviously they're going to try and do as much of, of the work sort of as possible. So there, there's a lot of variety and a lot of options, which at the same time can be a deterrent because it's very overwhelming. Like, you know, we're selling houses, I'm selling marketing, you're selling houses, Michael's selling eye bags. Like, I mean, I'm not a stager, but... I think that if we go back a slide, I mean, we did a pretty good job. Um, this is really cool. Uh, and I never really even thought about this before, but let's talk about basements being unfinished. Let's talk about, yeah, the house is, uh, you know, a shithole. It needs uh, renovations. It needs to, to, to be rebuilt. It needs to be redone. What could it look like? And again, in today's day and age where I may not be able to spend as much time in the property, if I can even get into the property as, a, as, a, as an investor, especially, I'm going to say there's probably a little bit more leniency of getting home people that actually need to live around um, right now. So again, look at this. Like this, this blew my mind. This is like a, a walkout sort of basement, um, half, half kind of, you know, set, if you will. And the, the picture up top is, is what it looks like mid construction and the picture at the bottom isn't a rendering for thousands of dollars. It's literally probably, that's like a $60 photo stage. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Um, time. I, I mean, we might've tried 25 different plants before we got the right plant, but you know, that's a whole different story. And that's where you're paying the professional a lot more for you for time. Just like, again, we're, we're all in the same, everyone on this call is in the same business. So let's just, um, you know, not lose respect for the professional. Um, I'm a big convenience value ease guy. So this is a great solution for um, our service offerings. And there's no real better solution for today's environment to, to, to sort of narrow down the, the window um, of, of time that you spend going to all these, uh, all these places. But the various applications you can do with virtual staging um, are tremendous. We're Currently working, and we should have it done next week, so it'll be posted or we'll send it out. We're currently working um, on a test property. Uh, we do some work with some home builders, and we have a unit that is just drywall. Like, literally, the tape was just sanded off. So um, that'll be pretty cool to see um, when that comes out, you know, because now you're talking about, I've got this property. It's not quite done, uh, you know, but it might not need to be all the way done if, if we can, again, show you what could be. We can, we can Photoshop images. We can put appliances in and then, and then we can stage. Now, you're going to pay for it, but you can't stage a home that's not finished. And if it costs you, let's say hypothetical, a thousand bucks to stage this whole house and you can get this house on market two, three, four months sooner to whatever, the ROI, you know, speaks for itself. That's, I feel, the true value of virtual staging um, is, is new construction, uh, huge. Um, what you can do with the content, the same thing. I mean, next level. Now we talk about a lot of my talks. I talk about setting yourself apart. Well, here's another great thing for you to show your, in your listing presentations. When you're showing your customers, hey, I'm going to spend some money. We're going to spend some money really, you know, marketing this property. And, you know, maybe a pivot. Maybe instead of a flyer, you're doing virtual, you're doing virtual staging or staging. Or maybe instead of a video on your listing, you're doing, you know, I'd, I'd say do video. But, you know, you follow. Um, so again, from a, 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 a marketing point of view, just more content is all you're going to give yourself. And I mean, clearly, again, this is a real life example. You can see 
I mean, it's amazing what a table, a couple of things on the counter, some accessories and a photo like uh, on the wall. It, it literally is, looks like a, let's go for dinner. Um, and then, you know, lastly, uh, and then I'll kind of just talk a little bit about the how to and stuff. Um, you know, we can, we can take the eye guide to the next level. We actually have the ability um, to stage the entire house. Um, it, it gets expensive. We're going to kind of go through that. I mean, it's all, you know, second and third party. A lot of it becomes, you know, it's time consuming, but again, it really depends on the application where you justify the ROI. So I'm going to screen share that with you guys. I'm going to show you, um, I love seeing the questions come in. I am going to show you, I have to get back to my screen share here. I'm going to show you some before and after photos, and then I'm going to show you an eye guide. And then we'll talk about some pricing. Um, if you guys can just confirm, we can see that. And then there's the after. I mean, it's, it's like just a no brainer. Can you make it larger, John? Yeah, sure can. So that's the after, there's the before and there's the after. Like, I mean, it's not even close. Not I even close. You're seeing your, uh, your navigator. Oh, the screen share. So you know what, I'll just show you the eye guide. It's the, the, the zoom doesn't like, um, doesn't like the, uh, the JPEGs. Okay. I'll show you the eye guide. I think that's what more people are interested in. And then I'll talk really quickly to the, um, uh, to the, to the price points in the process. And then we'll let you get into the VR stuff. You got that Mike? Uh, nothing. Yeah. Okay. Here it's popped up. Okay. Perfect. So this is a test, uh, from my home in Kitchener. You see the floor plan on the left side. We've staged three rooms in this property. We've staged the kitchen, even some outside. We've staged the living room. We even put a table over the logo. A lot of people say, can you move your logo? No, but you can put a table over it. <laughs> and, uh, and we staged the front foyer. So, I mean, all of a sudden, this house is pre-construction, not done yet. And, and we're showing you, hey, you know, this is, this is what it could look like inside. Now you're gonna see over here, we've turned off the rest of the tour um, to only showcase the rooms that we virtually staged. Staging is easy. Uh, it's third party providers for the most part, virtual staging, uh, third party providers for the most part. So we talked about the difference. We talked about the benefits. Now we'll give you like a quick tutorial on sort of how and, and how much. Um, so there's a few providers. The, the number one in the industry that everybody talks and knows about is Box Brownie. Box Brownie is great, very easy to use. Um, it's five minutes to set it up, a cup of coffee. Um, we did, uh, we did a, a Matthew and our, and our uh, we did a test the other day, uh, five to 10 minutes it took to upload and stage three photos, the three before and afters I was trying to show you there. Um, and they were back, it says 48 hours, they were back the next day. Now, they're in Australia. That's a problem. They're global. Um, they have a Vancouver office, but I mean, it's difficult when the, the production team is, is, you know, in another time zone. That being said, there are some options and I'm, we're, uh, our team, we're, we're, we're working with a Canadian provider. Um, again, we want to really, 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 you know, shop local if we can. Um, and I, I think actually the Canadian providers, you know, the price is a little bit better. What you're looking at, um, whether it's a, a, you do it yourself or you pay a third party, uh, photos, you're going to be in the 40 to 60 or $70 a room, again, depending on if you're doing it yourself, paying somebody to do it. And if there's touch-ups required, sometimes we have to Photoshop the photo first before we stage it because there's scratches on the wall and paint chips or just whatever. Um, the panos, so for, for, for staging a virtual tour, a 3D tour like an eye guide, you're going to be anywhere from 90 to 130, 140 a room, again, depending on how much editing is required. So let's say you have a house, new construction. We can't just do three rooms. Maybe we're gonna do two bedrooms, one room in the basement and the main floor. So let's call it six or seven rooms. It might be eight, nine, 10 panels. So, oh my God, all of a sudden it's a thousand bucks. It's a thousand dollars to stage a full, almost a full home and put it on a 3D contactless virtual platform and potentially bring the house to market two months ahead of schedule. It's all of a sudden not that cheap anymore, is it? Or it's not that expensive anymore. It's, I hate to use the word cheap, but um, I actually I hate that word, but it's, it's value. 
all of a sudden the ROI and comparatively speaking, not to mention you can't stage a home that's not done, um, you can spend anywhere from, you know, if you just need accessories and some design time, one, two thousand, all the way up to five or twenty thousand dollars to stage a home. Um, and, you know, like I said earlier, really depends on the home. And there's going to be some spots where it doesn't matter how much money you spend virtually, you're not going to get the same as hiring a professional, um, just like if I go on to a website to try and sell my home for a flat fee, I'm not going to get the same level of service and value. But, you know, if I have a little barn somewhere for, that's for sale for a hundred thousand bucks and I don't care, but I might just go drop a Kijiji ad. The reality is that that doesn't happen. So um, process wise, cost wise, it's very affordable. I think the biggest kicker and from what I understand about the real estate world is the timing is a little off. Um, a couple of days to get the photos um, and then it's another, maybe it could be another one or two days of time to get the panel, um, you know, in your eye guide. So if you're just doing photography only, you want to re-edit a YouTube slideshow or just for your email marketing, you can, you can bank on turning that over in about two, two business days. The eye guide may be more into the three, four business days. So when you have one of those listings where we got to be there tomorrow because you need the photos back tomorrow because you got to get online tomorrow, this might not work. It might work. For later um, but when you're when you most of the time I see um, you know I, I understand the process of, of buying and selling it and it's a process so you you're sitting with the people you know ahead okay we're signing today we'll we'll shoot it in three weeks etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, so you, you can actually save a lot of time in your process for the deals that you're actually sort of planning the rush stuff it's, don't even don't consider it because you you won't want to pay the fee that it's gonna cost to get it to you in time. So um, really, in, again, just to talk theory, um, and we'll answer the couple of questions at the end together. Um, uh, but just to kind of give you guys a little bit more of a notion as to sort of how and why, but the, the two questions we ask them, get, get asked the most is, can you do it? Yes. How much and how long? And like I just said, you, anywhere from 40, 50 bucks to 100, 150 a room, depending on what you're after, and anywhere from two to four days to deliver. So um, we're working on the service, trying to get it a little bit more scaled, streamlined, and, and just sort of better for, for both parties. But we're pretty confident uh, the first week of June that we'll roll it out. So we'll, we'll answer some more questions as we go along. So Michael, I'm done. Over to you if you want to kind of just maybe touch on the VR a little bit, and then we'll answer some questions. And it's Friday, man. I can't hear you. Sorry, uh, you were muted. Thought I, hit, I thought I hit the button, didn't push it hard enough. Uh, so, just a, just to, to, I guess to compliment your uh, one of the points that you mentioned at the beginning. You know, we've seen things start to tick up a bit. I mean, April was you know what down sixty percent across yeah. Canada in yeah. terms of home sales. Um, the amount of virtual tours and three D tours and uh, I guess. Uh, additional marketing on homes has gone up significantly. Uh, we saw in terms of our market share across Canada, we were, we're in the teens in terms of every home that sold uh, had an eye guide on it. So um, Mind -blowing. yeah, so it's, it's significant in terms of the shift, even with just the number of homes uh, being down. So crazy. And I'm sure you're seeing it. And I think with the nice weather, things are starting to pick up a little bit. So yeah, uh, absolutely. It's great. Yeah. Um, so, hey, the, you know, the most frustrating one thing I'll just touch on in terms of we'll talk about the VR experience and just what different types of VR are uh, that, you know, there's still the most frustrating thing about the home search process is finding that right home for you. And the whole thing about what the eye guide does and, and what a lot of this technology does is it, it gives control to the consumer to really discover if that home is going to fit for them and their family. And it's about control and, it, and it's really giving them, um, you know, giving you better qualified leads for that property because they can quickly discern and determine if that home is right for them, if it meets their key criteria and everybody's got criteria in terms of what they want to see in that home, what's the pain points of their existing home and how they want to alleviate that. If they live on a noisy street, they want to make sure they're on a quiet street. And then what aspects of the home, if the, you know, the bedrooms aren't big enough, they want to have the right size bedrooms. And so what they'll do is, and what we see when we track people go through an eye guide is they'll go to those points that are most important to them first. 
really determine and it's giving them control and that's the feedback that we get that it's a great experience because they can quickly determine yeah this is the right home for me now i really want to dive in deeper and it's like i always use the analogy of shopping at ikea as you're walking through ikea you want to get to the kitchens but you got to walk through half the store to get there it's a very frustrating process so um i'm going to share my screen here john and just uh, confirm that you can see this eye guide pop up. Good. Yeah, perfect. Um, so, what I mean, VR in total is not just about the goggles and stuff. This is virtual reality. What this is called when you're looking at it on a screen is it's called um, window on world. So. Uh, my marketing manager, Chris, he, he equates it to, if you think about, you know, if you rode a motorcycle and you got that helmet on, you can only see this window out of, out of you know, a particular, uh, out of the helmet. You can see the world through that helmet. That's what looking through window on world is kind of like. When you're looking on a screen or a mobile device, that's the, the experience you're getting. When we're going to talk about a little bit today is how do you get that is a more immersive experience and that's what really um, you know wearing these goggles and and uh, allow you to have that uh, more immersive experience and really kind of feel like you're in the space so it's like taking that helmet off and now you're in the space and you can kind of get a better feel for it and an understanding of that space it's not quite tactile yet in there but I mean the the amount of virtual reality and the ability and the quality is getting better all the time. Um, you know, one thing I would like to state is that we're still seeing that, you know, this is still number one in terms of how people are engaging with the space. So that mobile experience is key. Is it fast to load? Is it, is it um, easy to, uh, you know, navigate through that mobile experience? And that's one of the key and top things that you want to keep in mind. And we've seen those numbers creep up year over year. I think it's over 60% this year that we're seeing that's we're tracking to um, in terms of how many people are on a mobile device versus a desktop device. And then it also is influenced by time of day, time of the week. Uh, I'm curious to see how our new state and condition working from home has changed that. And, and so I'm looking at that data and I'll be able to give you an update in the next, uh, next time I'm on probably to walk through how the you know, engaging with these properties online has changed. So we've got this window long world experience that, you know, you're seeing this experience, you can, you know, minimize the floor plans to have more of an immersive experience. But what you do really to get that, um, that, you know, where you want to wear the goggles and stuff, you'll see on the eye guide here, there's a little VR headset mode is what we call it. And so this will pop up on a mobile device. Uh, typically, it won't show up on the desktop but I've got it rigged here, so it will. So when I click on that, what that's gonna do is it's gonna load up in the browser um, and it's taking a little bit to load up here. I think I should close off some of the tabs I've got, maybe to get things going a little faster. And it worked a second ago, we're having a little technical difficulties. It's okay, just try, maybe just refresh it. Yeah. It's because you guys are so busy. The server is on overload, which is awesome. Well, I think it's actually my, it's my internet here at home. Got the kids on devices, my wife on devices and. Welcome to COVID. Anyway, you got it now. Yeah. Is it popping up on your. Yeah. We've got to experience VR to begin. So I'm not seeing it on my screen, but you're seeing it on your screen? Yeah, here, you know what, Mike? Uh, let's try it once more, and if it doesn't work, we can try and set, send a video. Do you wanna, um, I'll leave the screen share. Sorry, everybody, just bear with us for one second. Let's, I can't, I gotta take back the host controls here. You know what, I think it's cause I'm on a, I need yeah. to put it onto my. Why don't you exit the screen share and let's, let's go back in, okay? There we go. We'll try this one more time. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it to my, my laptop so it's not on my desktop. And I think that might be the issue.
Sorry, everybody. I'll just give uh, Mike a second here. Let me answer a question while you do that, Mike. Oh. No. Sorry, everybody. We, we had tested this before we went live here. Yeah, I don't know why it's not popping up now. Okay. Well, just, just exit. And do you want to just kind of maybe just move along? Well, what I can do is I've got a quick video as I can show, I can put yeah. and show that experience here. So maybe answer a question, John, and give me a second to uh, set it up. Sure. So, um, how is the virtual? So the first Talene says, "How's the?" This is a great question. How is the virtual staging you offer different from other companies? So, so Talene, it's not different. Understand, Box Brownie is one of a few providers of the service. So we're not going to do anything differently than you're going to do it. We're just going to do it for you, so you don't have to. So it's like I said at the beginning. It's really just a question of how much you value your time in the whole process. But um, I, we're trying to work with a provider other than Box Brownie. Um, that's local to Canada. So if we're going to give 40, 50, 60, 80 dollars to somebody, I want to give it to a Canadian somebody. So, but otherwise there is no difference. Um, so then everything you've seen has actually been done through Box Brownie. Uh, it's the cat's ass. Like I said, you can log on right now and within 15 minutes be signed up and have a half a dozen photos out to be, uh, to be staged. So it's, it's pretty wild. Um, and Lenita asks, I love Lenita, you're the best. You always have questions. I love the engagement. Um, what style do you think appeals to the masses, contemporary, traditional, et cetera? Again, I'm not a designer, so I'm not going to comment on that. I think that um, this is one of those things where, like, you know, maybe it's a great educational spot, too. You know, Google's going to answer a lot of your questions with respect to, you know, design and stuff like that. So that's a question. If I typed it into Google, I bet you it would give you some it would give you some stats, but I think it also depends on the house. Me, I'm a modern kind of, you know, kind of guy. I have some friends that are very traditional, like their espresso cups have the, the gold rim on them. So again, I think Lenita, that's sort of um, giving validity right back to staging professionals um, because they would be able to, to be better set to, to design that. Um, Talene, virtual renovations is a fantastic option. You can solve with contractors. So again, We'll do whatever. It really just goes to time, meaning um, uh, whether you consult with a builder, whether you're consulting with a designer, um, you know, if, if I was the renovator, I may have, um, I may have that up and I may just work with the person and, and sort of just do it that way. But again, um, it really goes back to um, who you want to have involved in the process and the time. And, you know, it's like anything we pay for time. So that's, uh, you know, that's what we can, we can sort of put out. Um, and the last other question to lean is, does Treb allow for us to use virtually staged photos on MLS? I'm going to say, I, yeah, I mean, the photos are photos. Um, uh, Michael, am I right to say that MLS? Of course, like, yeah, the photos, it doesn't matter. Where, where MLS's restrictions mostly come into with Deline is like all on, from, as I understand it, more on the specifics of the house and as they relate to the, the individual professional and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, they're, I think they're more interested in just not having people's logos in the photos. It's their big thing from a branding point of view. But yeah, you can use, if you could use it on MLS and further, in case Deline, you missed, um, any of our previous webinars, they're online and, and the videos are available. Um, iGuide is one of the few providers that's fully um, embeddable with um, MLS and Broker Bay. So it is a true virtual um, immersive, you know, sh space showcasing platform, if you will. So um, again, no, no, no better, uh, no better tools. And Lenita says, I use it before and after. So it's not misleading. And sorry, Mike, but Lenita, you're right. Um, and even from a marketing point of view, like it's, it's a double whammy. You're, you're showing people, Hey, don't be fooled. It doesn't look like this. So that's where I, for me, that's my problem with virtual staging and crazy twilight shit and all this stuff. Like when you start to get editing and you're putting cars in driveways, we'll do it. And it looks cool from a marketing point of view. And I'm a marketer. So if I want eyeballs, let me give, give me a house and let's make it look, but like Lenita says, you, you need to still show the people, especially in this environment. Like Michael said at the beginning, oh, you guys weren't on that call. We were talking about something where somebody delivered a product and it was damaged inside, but the case was mint. So that my, my point being is, is right now you can't get out and see things in the flesh. 
So we have to give, as much as we want to give that sort of marketing ploy, we have to, like Lenita says, we have to be, we have to be honest. So Mike, did you get up and running? Yeah. All right, let's go. I had about a thousand browsers open. So well, just... you know, you're a busy guy. Um, all right, let's go back to sharing my screen and we should be good to go. So do you see the, oh, which one do you see, John? Uh, video or? Yeah. No, to experience VR, press begin. Okay, so can you see that a minute now? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So what happens is you basically can load it up. It comes up oh, in a sorry, browser. Mike, I'm, I'm gonna stop. I just wanna, and, and I apologize because you just disappeared. And so before anybody tells me to stop, I'm just gonna give you an example. We're showing you an example on the screen. Imagine, you have your goggles on right now. That's why you see the map up there. So obviously we can't show you first person point of view. So Michael is inside of that view. So what you're seeing is what you would see inside of the goggles. I just want to make that point and now Mike, take it away. Yeah, so exactly. So what you're going to do is it's load it in a browser. It's going to be on your phone or the, you know, some sort of device like an Oculus that you can load up the eye guide into. And then what you do is you click on it, you put this on your headset, and this is what you're gonna see. You're gonna see the floor plan. And the floor plan, when you have the goggles on, is gonna be a little further to the left. It's gonna, just because this is on a screen, it shows a little different, but it shows you the direction you're looking in and where you are at. That little red dot there, and that you follow that point along, that's kind of where you're looking and where you are. Now. What you're looking at directly, you see a little green circle right directly in the center of my screen. When you want to move, what you do is you point that to this position that you want to go to, and it's going to bring you to that kitchen, for example. So this is how you really walk around the space. You can see up, down, you know, however you want to look at it. And I'm trying to go slowly here, so don't, don't make anybody sick. Uh, and you really can have that walkthrough experience. Now, if you want to have a walkthrough experience, John and his team will, um, you know, can create a different experience and, and create more panos for that walkthrough experience if that's something that you're looking for. Uh, it's really, you have to cater to it a little bit. But the other nice thing about what we do is with the floor plans in there is you can just jump directly and navigate just like on the iGUIDE itself. You look down and when you look down, what pops up is a larger floor plan of the whole home. Now you can pick and choose where you want to go to. So again, like what I brought up earlier is I want to go directly to that master bedroom and check it out. What I can do is I take that little green dot again and I look exactly, and sorry, this is doing it on a screen is a little different than doing it with your actual headset. And you can move directly to uh, the room that you want to check out. And so in this room, as I look around, I can actually see this master bedroom. I don't know if there's a lot of lag on your time, but really that kind of gives you that immersive experience. John, I know that we kind of had this technical delay, so I won't spend too much time on it, but that really gives you that ability to, the, the two different ways to navigate in the space, but really still see that, have the floor plans. And that's a really a big thing about what the eye guide is and what we hear feedback is. You know where you're in the space and how it's relative to the whole home, especially when you have the VR sets on, you don't get lost in that first person space and like, where did that room, where was it again? I'm still able to find my way around and, you know, even check out things. So it's just a, a great way to navigate and really understand this space. So um, we can move around again to different spaces and really understand you know, what, what other rooms and just have more of a walkthrough experience if you, if you want, if you like. So um, one quick thing I'll, I'll, you know, talk about, and I'm just going to stop sharing for a second, John, so you can see me. Like there's different ways of doing this. You can buy, you know, high-end devices. There's even Google Cardboard uh, that you load it on your phone and you can put it on a device like this. You stick your phone in there. Yeah, the Google Cardboard is great. You, can, you, get, you go on YouTube, you can make it yourself, right? Yeah, and it's, it's, it's an okay experience. I mean, the better experiences, you can spend a little bit of money. And I can show you here. I put some up on screen. You can get a good, like, goggles are cheap. So yeah. it goes back to... Um, so uh, there's Oculus Go, Oculus Quest. We know we use... We use the Oculus uh, at, at the office, and it's, it's fun, and it works great. 
Uh, there's also, you know, the step up ones like uh, Oculus Rift. Now the difference between the Go and, and uh, the first ones, they're not tethered to a computer. There's no tether screen. So the Oculus Rift, even though it's a higher end experience, um, you're tethered to something. So it, it does impede you a little bit. Uh, but, you know, for these experiences, if you want to have someone to have more of an, an immersive experience, this is, you know, a great way to really kind of demo and, and show that. So you, you show a couple of different options. So before someone goes out and spends $800, like, so we have a few other crazy technologies too, like augmented reality and the ability to drive around and look at signs and get videos and, and all this crazy stuff. But, you know, the consumer literally just needs a piece of cardboard, but imagine you're in an office now and we've got, um, and we've got, uh, and we've got, um, sorry, Mike, I'm kicking you out of there. Yep. And we've got um, uh, 10 listings. You sit somebody down, we put the goggles on, we're walking them through your maybe virtually staged properties. And now all of a sudden, what you just saw, imagine like anybody on this webinar, anybody that's watching now or later that's ever used VR, when you're staring into your goggles like this, it's wild. Um, if you haven't, experienced it, experience it. It's not what you think. It's not total recall shit. It's just pretty cool because you just, you just feel like you're in the space. Mike, before we end, cause we're, we're pushing quarter to 12. Can you, yeah. can you show us the, um, um, the offline, um, eye guide? Sure. Cause yeah, that's another is. thing. Um, so just to the virtual staging in the VR up and coming tech available, um, don't be hard on yourself if you're not ready for it. It's not, it's not for everybody. I mean, far and few between, but you need to understand that it's coming. Nothing you're going to do is going to change that. So start to embrace it. Um, the next one to five years, especially given what, what, what just happened or what's happening in the world, don't want to be here telling you I told you so, but I had a customer call me yesterday. It was awesome. They used iGuide five years ago and they realized that they need iGuide again. It was a pretty cool call. So anyway, Mike, if you can show us, um, yeah. lots so of people ask me about downloading the iGuide. Yeah, so this is not the offline version, but uh, what I get asked about, uh, quite often, a lot of agents reach out to us and say, hey, I would like to have a sample property that I could show people um, you know, if I'm in conversation with them, hey, this is one of the technologies I use when I do a listing. So John yeah. and, at Realtors can give you a sample property. You can go to that link. And when you open that iGuide on your phone, all you do is really is you, you, you click the, uh, the share button on here. Um, you scroll down on your phone. So you scroll down and it's going to be hard to see, I think. Yeah, there we can see it there. Yeah, yeah, perfect. And then uh, you're going to go to there'll be a button there that says add to home screen. Yeah. So you click on that. And what it's going to do is it's going to add that eye guide to your home screen. You're going to see the eye guide logo or icon or yeah, maybe okay. the, of the house. And what you can do is then quickly, if you want to pull up an eye guide or a property, or even if it's a property that you're selling and you want to quickly show them, uh, show somebody it, all you do is you just basically, you'll see the icon. It'll show up on your home screen. And sorry, it's loading. Yeah, boom, and the loaded. property will it'll pop up. Right? But, so. so when so when and when so when they get the iGuide report, that's the download offline iGuide link. That's all it is. No, it's not the download offline. That's a something separate. So this is just if you want to have that an iGuide at the ready and you've got them some samples that you're handing out or you're, you're sharing. Okay. Yeah. Right. You're the listing. Yes. A lot of agents are asking like for samples now. So I've got some beautiful homes and I've got one with staging that I, I you know, and of course our logos are on them from a marketing point of view. That's the idea. Yeah. So that's just a shortcut to get it, um, how to load. And last week you showed us for anybody that missed that call, you can see the recording, how to download the offline eye guide. So yeah. the cool thing about the eye guide is you have it forever. Um, just be mindful after two weeks, the links expire. Cause we're not in the, you know, we, we don't want to build cloud servers. We'll leave that for Amazon and Apple. Um, and it's a real pain in the ass when we get calls down the road saying, Hey, I need these photos. Um, but yeah, that's all sort of available there. The VR, if it's active on your order is awesome. It literally just, uh, the VR, um, icon pops up and you know, boom, you hit, you hit a button. Um, yeah. it works yeah, best so in the Google Chrome, uh, uh, 
web browser. That's probably the best web browser to do it. And then on my, of course, on my ISO of device that was on Safari. So it works fine on that. Chrome is generally the, the, I mean, Google owns the world. Steven, um, any chance you well, I love Steven. You don't have any questions for me today. Last week you were great. Any chance you can just include samples in the next follow up? Um, yes, no, probably not in this week's follow up. Probably in the next one, we're, we're going to have a, a separate whole email just about these services. So just give us the week after I, I've, I've mandated the team that this stuff all has to be ready. Um, and like, like you saw last week too, we, we also now have the ability through, um, uh, Planetar, um, and some other providers to allow for a dollhouse feature as well. So remember a lot of people ask, what's the difference between the providers? I guide from a technical point of view, actual space, floor planning point of view, best in the business. Um, if you think a dollhouse is going to sell your house faster than all that data, I think you're wrong, but you know what? I'm a businessman. So now we have that available for you as well. And essentially competitive too, because if I remove the floor plan and I give you dollhouse, the price is the same. My, my headspace says the dollhouse should be above and beyond. Um, Michael shows a stat every time that says, uh, you know, right after photos, people go for floor plan. So, um, and Stephen Clark Lucas from my office just messaged me and says he will include some samples in the email. So there you go. Um, Mike, thanks again for your time. Thanks for having me, John. Thank you so much for everybody that attended. Um, we're going to be back next week for another session, and then we're going to take a week off. Um, I'm uh, going to, we're in the process of sort of reopening the office and whatever have you. So we're going to take a little bit of a break and then we're going to roll out. Um, I think after next week, we're going to be done with all the technical stuff. We'll have a really good um, educational channel and then we'll start to dive more into, um, into marketing and you know, what's new. I, I'm not bugging Mike today about what's new, but myself and, and my look inside partners are always bugging Mike about what's coming next. And, you know, since we're the largest provider, you know, no, we love you, Mike. Thanks so much. And everybody, have a wicked weekend. Be safe and smart and responsible. And thank you so much. You too. Have a great weekend, Sophia. And um, we'll see you guys next Friday. Cheers. Stay safe.